from the campus studios of Sarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hello, and welcome to another edition of Ropecast. I'm Roger Charlton, and today with me in the studio, in place of my regular partner, Peter, I would like to welcome back Carrie, who is one of um, the department members who kind of bridges the gap between linguistics and language teaching. Welcome, Carrie. Thank you, Roger. How are you? Good. A little bit tired, but good. Thanks. I think um, what it's important for our listeners to understand is that um, you've been researching into uh, the perception of language, in this case, English. Mm -hmm. And we can perhaps use this as an illustration of how academic work, research work can sometimes feed straight into daily practice, Mm -hmm. in this case, teaching in the classroom or learning. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And you probably have a number of examples of that from your own life history. Uh, Plenty, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Perhaps as a learner initially when you were learning German or one of the other languages? Um, What, in terms of how research helped me? Yeah. Yeah, sure. Um, I was actually just talking about an example recently. Um, When I was learning German, I had trouble pronouncing the the U with the dots, the (laughs) U. And um, I actually always thought it was a funny U sound. And um, my German teacher used to yell at us for sounding like cows when we said, Ich bin Muda. (laughs) And I thought, but that's what you said. You said Muda. And then later, when I was researching in linguistics and learning about the International Phonetic Alphabet, I realized that U is not a weird U sound. It's actually a weird E sound. Yes. And listeners, you can try this at home. If you produce an E, you're smiling and your tongue is forward and front in your mouth. And if you produce an U, you'll notice that all you're doing is rounding your lips. Which is, brings us around to one of the yeah. things we can pass on, the, yeah. the techniques of pronunciation, yeah. where you need a little bit of help about what's going on in the mouth yeah. in order to make the sounds fairly accurate. Yeah, and I try to show my students that, that when yeah. we talk about phonetics and the sounds of a language, if it's an abstract, they can actually just take this knowledge into making themselves better pronunciators, pronunciators <laughs> uh, of English sounds. <laughs> That's a strange word. It is a strange (laughs) word. It possibly doesn't exist. (laughs) Well, you've invented it now. (laughs) There you go. (laughs) Clever of you. (laughs) You just mentioned IPA, which is Mm -hmm. the uh, International Phonetic Alphabet. Mm -hmm. And perhaps I could just point out to our listeners that we will put some information Mm -hmm. on the website. If we do happen to use technical terms, they they will be explained. Yeah. Yeah, for and those we, who want them explaining. Yeah, exactly. And I think um, when, when we do that, we should use um, an IPA chart that has buttons on it where you can click on the symbol and you'll get an example of the sound. Excellent. Yeah, yeah. good. Mm-hmm. Well, let's come around to your own research. Could mm-hmm. you just say a little bit of what you've been doing recently? Yeah, um, I do a number of things. But today we're going to talk about um, my research in um, production and perception of English phonemes. Yes. And when I first got to Germany in 1998, uh, I realized that Germans sometimes have trouble with the v w distinction. Yes. And a student once told me that they came from a very small village. Yes. And I did not understand what they meant. And we had to switch into German. Yes. And they said, ja, ein klein Dorf. I was like, oh, a village. And that led me into my research of maybe Germans have trouble perceiving hearing the difference yes. between va and wa. Yeah. And that's exactly what I found. Yes. Yeah. So um, you use the term phoneme there. That mm-hmm. means one of the basic sounds of the language. Yeah, yeah. a meaning distinguishing sound yeah. in English. Yeah. And then, of course, they, there are variants of those. Mm-hmm. Uh, like in English, we have two different L sounds. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, people need to be able to listen and distinguish these Exactly. In order to be able to produce them correctly or yeah. reasonably correctly. Yeah, and I mean, basically, a lot of the research, research says that and it's almost maybe a little bit intuitive that if you want to produce a sound correctly, you, you have to be able to hear it first. Yeah. So when I was learning the, the U with the dots, the U, um, I couldn't produce it until I could hear the difference yes. between U and U. Yeah. So this would mean that uh, people teaching English would probably need to do a lot of listening practice from the early stages yeah. so that the learners can actually be trained yeah. to hear these differences that yeah. wouldn't exist in their own sound system. Yeah, exactly. So listening exercises, I think with maybe a little bit of linguistic explanation can be really, really helpful mm-hmm. there. Yeah. I mean, that's what I do in classes with the va wa distinction. Yeah. So what else would um, Germans need to know about 
about English pronunciation, um, well, what I find interesting, and we've talked about this before, is that most of my students are very concerned about their TH, oh, yes. the dental fricatives. They're, they're tricky to pr produce, and I'm very glad I'm a native speaker. I don't have to worry about that. Um, and maybe I shouldn't say this to the podcast, depending on who's listening. Uh, <laughs> kids, close your ears. Um, but it's not an incredibly important sound in English. If mm. you mispronounce a th, people will will understand what you what you mean. Yeah. Uh, so suza or fava are very common uh, replacement sounds, and and those are easy. That that's fine. When people make those sounds, we're, we're able to understand. What's a little bit more problematic is I think probably the the voicing mm -hmm. uh, contrasts um, that gets a little bit more difficult, especially here in the Zaland. Yeah. I think maybe we should do a, a podcast special on the on the sounds of the local area here. Yeah, than, I think that'd be very interesting. Yeah. yeah. Okay, well, for today, thank you very much, Carrie. And yeah. I'm sure we're going to carry on with this topic quite soon. I, I hope so. Bye. All right. Thanks. Bye-bye. You've been listening to Ropecast, brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.